Hi friend, welcome to day four of our study in Mark. I am so glad that you're here. Let's go ahead and pray. Ah, oh, Father God Almighty, thank you for your word. Thank you for this time. Lord, thank you that you are with us. We implore you now. We kneel our hearts and our minds and our strength to you and ask that this time would be healing for us, that we might know and enjoy you and be healed in new ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go ahead and read. This is Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. And a leper came to him, imploring him and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. But he went out and began to freely, he began to talk freely about it and to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in desolate places and people were coming to him from every quarter. Okay, friends, well, there's lots to look at today. And if you have time, I do recommend lingering. If you are short on time, ask that one good question. What does this passage have to say about who Jesus is? And I found several things, but if you have, you know, if you are really short on time, just choose one, find one thing that this says about Jesus and understand that, enjoy it, apply it to your life and go on, take that one thing into your day. Friends, here are some things that I learned about Jesus from this passage today. Number one, he goes away to pray. <laughs> we see that in part one of our passage, right? It, it, verse 35, and rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed, he went out to a desolate, desolate place, and there he prayed. And I asked this question, why? Why does he get up very early in the morning? Well, we have to look back at yesterday and remember that uh, verse 32 says that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons and the whole city was gathered together at the door of his house. So literally he is just surrounded by, I just picture kind of this mass of humanity that is outside of the house where he is staying. So he has no choice if he wants to be alone with the father. He needs to go out. He needs to rise very early in the morning. And I know uh, I can relate to that as a mom of four children. <laughs> Once everyone was up, you know, I, I don't know, I guess... Okay, I didn't have the whole city gathering outside of myself, uh, outside of my house, but inside it felt like it. The needs just came uh, pulling in, so to speak. So there is, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it, yeah, it's so beautiful to see the details of this story. Why early? It was out of necessity to be alone with the Father. So friend, I don't know, that speaks to my heart today, practical application. Do we all need to rise early? I don't know, but I think we definitely see that time alone to be with our Father is a necessity. Like if Jesus needed this to pour out, then we need it as well. And I really did. I compared and I contrasted his public ministry versus what his private life looks like. His 
his public ministry, wow, we see him serving, right? I mean, he states his purpose. That was the second thing I learned about Jesus today is his mission. He is on mission. He is on this kingdom building mission. He says in verse 39, um, or this is 38, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And then in the next verse, we see him going through all of Galilee. And uh, what is he doing? He's preaching and he's casting out demons. He is pouring out. He is serving. And so in his private life, we see he is being recharged. He is seeking out his father. He's making sure he's unified with the father in his mission. What else do I learn about Jesus? Oh, I see his compassion in the second part of this passage. Uh, he looks on, here comes this leopard. This leopard runs to him. Uh, and we need to understand what a leper is, right? A leper, uh, uh, he, he has a, a skin disease called leprosy. It's a wasting disease that destroys the flesh and it's very contagious on contact. And, you know, the cross reference here, friends, is Leviticus chapter 13. And it's a very, very long chapter, but it's worth looking at to see the life and to see and understand the life of a leper. So Leviticus chapter 13, this is verse 45 and, and 46. Here was what their life looked like once they were diagnosed with leprosy. The leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Ugh, that's hard to read. I, I think probably... We all in the 21st century can relate to this just a smidgen more. We can't completely relate, but we can relate a smidgen more after living through the isolation of COVID. He was living an isolated life and wherever he went, he needed to announce his uncleanliness to everyone. Friends, whether we have a need or we have sin, we don't have to go around announcing it to everyone, right? We can kind of keep that to ourselves in private. He, as a leopard, must go around announcing that. He cannot be around people. He cannot touch. Uh, he is very isolated. And here we see him. He comes. It's like he comes running to Jesus. He comes. He kneels. Uh, he implores. And this kneeling, friends, when I looked it up, means to rest one's weight. Like you're, you're down on your knees for sure, but it's often a sign of reverence, uh, submission, and shame. Or it can be any one of those or all of those combined. For this leper, I imagine it being all together. He kneels in reverence. Here he has seen divinity, right? Someone who has the power to heal. He submits to this higher power and he comes in his shame. He comes in his uncleanliness and he he is, I think he is believing. He says, he speaks to Jesus. He says, if you will, it's not if you can, but if you will, if you will have pity on me, you can make me clean. He is believing that Jesus can do it if Jesus will will it on his behalf. And Jesus, what do we learn about Jesus? He has compassion. Uh, it says he is moved with pity. Jesus stretches out his hand to touch him. That is significant, right? Because truly uh, the leprosy is contagious. So Jesus could just speak. We know he has the power to speak and it will be. And he does. He speaks, be clean. But out of mercy, out of compassion, he also touches this man. I love that about Jesus. He speaks, 
and he touches. That touches my heart today. And then last of all, we just see his power, right? Here he is, power in his teaching, power in casting out demons, and power to heal the leper. Friends, if we put our first century uh, Jewish glasses on, right, to understand this word from those who were living at this time, no one has had the power to do this. No one who can do this but God himself. Who can do this? All right, friends. Uh, that's what I learned about Jesus today. There's a lot packed in there. I'm still unpacking it as a practical application, friends. I'm going to get down on my knees and worship and uh, bring him my needs for today. Will you do the same with me? And then let's meet again tomorrow. We'll unpack this week.